weather weirding has struck again. It was bucketing down rain this morning, and it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon right now. The sun's out. It's a beautiful day. So I'm sitting up here on the deck about to see how my epoxy bedding experiment worked. So I'm doing this live, and uh, you can watch while I unveil. So I've ripped off some of the paper, and I'll just give this a good whack, and the uh, piece should come loose. Just like that. Not too worse for the wear. I have noticed one thing with these pieces of wood as I'm putting them back on. They're really brittle. I mean, they're splitting. Let's overdo a screw just a little bit. The wood splits, which is not good. Turned out just about how I expected it to. But here's the evidence that the bulwark isn't straight. See, the layer of epoxy is really thin on the inside edge and on the outside edge, about a quarter of an inch. You can see the uh, the wrinkles in the epoxy from the wax paper underneath. That's not really important, just as long as there's something underneath there to support the wood. Because the um, boom gallows pedestal is going to sit right there. And uh, with that much space underneath it, it's got three lag bolts that go through and screw down into the fiberglass. I'm quite certain that that would probably split the wood real good. Um, but I had a an epiphany on why it is this way. When I was laying in bed last night meditating upon the deep mysteries of shipbuilding, I remembered something. When I took the cap rails off, there was a ton of what is supposed to be polysulfide underneath the cap rails. Polysulfide has a characteristic of remaining flexible and rubbery even after years and years and the stuff that was underneath the cap rail certainly was not it was very brittle in my earlier videos in fact the cap rail videos you can see the stuff it just broke up and snapped off and i had assumed that it was simply for sealing i didn't realize it was for leveling and bedding the cap rail but that's what it was for for leveling and bedding the cap rail so i am probably going to have to do something similar to that for the rest of the cap rails. Fortunately, there's no complex curves, it's just flat. But I will I will likely use um, some kind of polysulfide. I might use 4200, but it is very sticky stuff. And once you put it down, if you try and get the cap rail off again, you're going to rip off chunks of wood with it. So that remains to be seen. Depends on if I can come up with a cost-effective solution or not. But in the meantime, I'm going to put this piece back on after I repair the split in it, and we will proceed from there. Welcome aboard again. Today is Thursday. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm here after a full day of work, and I'm getting ready to work on the boat. I've reached a bit of an impasse. I expected to have the boomkin and the bowsprit mounted already, but I have been stymied in my efforts. My cunning plan has hit a roadblock. And the reason being was because, as I explained on the previous video, underneath the cap rails requires uh, some kind of bedding compound. The original plans called for dolphinite. Now, I didn't, I didn't know what dolphinite was when I read that, and I didn't really understand why it would call for dolphinite. I assumed that it was just something to um, level the bulwarks and give the cap rail something to sit on. But what I didn't realize was the bulwarks are far from being level, and the dolphinite is a, a rubbery, almost like silicone, I guess, compound that you put the cap rail on top of, and it fills all the gaps. When I took the cap rails off, the product underneath the cap rails it wasn't dolphinite. Uh, dolphinite remains rubbery and stuff I took off. It's more like Bondo. It was hard and brittle. If you dropped it, it would just smash like a, uh, a porcelain plate. 
Um, so I put my cap rails on and discovered two things. One, there's a huge gap underneath the uh, downward portion, the S curve of the teak, which is not good. And when I was putting the screws in to hold it down, I experienced uh, about three pieces splitting. So one of the pieces I've already um, repaired, I repaired it in place, this piece right here. That little chunk there just split right out. So I put some epoxy on it, put a clamp on it, and clamped it back into place. The reason I did it in situ like that is because I used 4200 to seal the screw holes. I wasn't expecting to be taking the cap rails off again anytime soon, so I wasn't really worried about it. Now, 4200 is great stuff for what it's designed for, which is sealing leaks, but it also sticks. It's like glue. It's not as bad as 5200, but it does stick. So when you try and take the... Um, the cap rail or wood back off, you end up leaving chunks of wood behind, which this is old stuff, it's brittle, and uh, I don't want to damage it more than it already is. So I've repaired that piece right where it is, and I'm going to leave it like that because uh, the, the gap underneath the cap rail isn't that significant. The screw holes are sealed. It's not likely that I'm going to be putting any other kind of hardware on it or through it, so we're okay. The other piece that's split, this one here, you can, I don't know if you can see that, I might haul you over here, but right down there, it's split, shoot the crack, and that was just from putting that screw in there. So I had to stop and ask myself, why is the wood splitting when I put it back on? The plans for the cap rails, the West Sale plans call for pan head screws, which are flat. But of course, the holes that have been pre-drilled through the teak uh, have been done with a countersunk screw in mind. So when you put a flat screw in a hole designed with a, a cone shape, and of course, I was enthusiastic in tightening them, tightening them down. It just split the wood. So I've got to come up with a solution. I need to find a source for some dolphinite, which is hard to get these days, at least in Canada. And I need to bed the remaining cap rails and I need to be very careful when I put my screws back in but tonight's project is to get that piece off and to uh, repair it there's another S piece in the shop that I need to repair um, that probably won't take me that long to do and once that's done I will continue work on the rudder cheeks I need to I need to apply penetrating epoxy to the rudder cheeks and the little cap that goes over the top of them. And I'd like to have that installed before I put the boom kit on. I wasn't planning on it, but um, given the delays I'm experiencing with the cap rails, I think I will do that. It'll just make it easier to put the rudder cheeks back on without the boom kit being in the way. So that's today's agenda. It remains to be seen how much of it I'll get done, but that's what the plan is. taking two different approaches to repairing these pieces. This one, I um, used a wood chisel and actually rammed it into the crack and split it right off. Then I ground out the um, rough bits where the screw was, and I'm going to epoxy that with a, a clamp. I'll put the epoxy on and clamp in place. This one, I have to treat it a little bit differently because the crack in it runs from there all the way down the length of it. If I try and finish the crack, it'll split the whole thing right in half. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to router it out from the back side. You can see how the crack started at the screw hole and split there and then went down that way. So I'm going to router that crack out fairly deeply, fill that with epoxy, and that should hold it.
should. Let's get busy. job and I got it done in almost record time. You can see behind me here I've got the uh, chip that I broke off clamped with a couple of clamps It's because the edges are rounded so clamping it in one direction doesn't squeeze it down tight so I had to put clamps in two directions. So I'll leave that there tonight hopefully nobody disturbs it. But I wanted to talk about something else. The trouble I've been having with the cap rails and the previously hold screws I explained by stating how the holes are shaped with a V in them and I'm using pan head screws which are flat and I can overcome those issues but it made me think about the next step and the next step is to put teak bungs over top of the screws and chisel them off. Now if the wood is so brittle that the screws are making it split uh, I can imagine that putting a teak bung in is going to make it split even more, which would be most tragic after having everything installed nicely. So I was looking for an alternative and I came up with one. This is, as you can see, Boat Life Life Caulk. It is a polysulfide compound. This particular tube is mahogany colored, so it will roughly match the color of the teak. You can get teak colored life caulk, but the store where I bought this didn't have any in stock and I didn't want to wait three weeks for them to get some in stock. So I bought this tube. This stuff, once it's cured, uh, it's waterproof, which is kind of the point of putting something over the screw heads. And it can be sanded, so I can sand it down and it can be painted, which means I can put whatever coating, finishing coat I put over the cap rails I can put on on top of this. Now they do warn you that some paints won't stick and but they give you a list so I'm okay with that. So this stuff is expensive. One tube should do me for I think there's about 250 holes in all of the cap rails all around the boat and uh, so I'm hoping that, that will be a suitable uh, solution to the teak bungs. It'll definitely be faster and uh, hopefully more waterproof. We'll see. My last chore for the day is to apply penetrating epoxy to the rudder cheeks. I've added a little bit of a ledge on the top so when they actually go on the rudder, like so, there will be a cap, this, that sits on top, like that. And I'm not going to screw it, I'm just going to epoxy them on. So I wanted as much of a surface as possible to epoxy it to, so I added those little bits. Not a big deal. I also routered out the inside. There's a steel plate on the rudder. Um, and of course, putting the cheeks over top of the steel plate wouldn't work. So I had to router out a little notch in both of them. But that has exposed the wood. I also want to uh, protect the backside of, of this. I've mentioned before that this wood is ash. And ash isn't known for its uh, rot resistance. So I want to make sure that it's very rot resistant. And penetrating epoxy is the way to go. So that's what I'm going to do right now.
had a little bit of the penetrating epoxy left over. So I'm up here in the V-birth and I'm rather than wasting the penetrating epoxy, I'm gonna apply it to the forward bulkhead. I think I've shown this to you before, but if not, I'll give you a little review. This is the actual bulkhead. There's a, a piece of uh, teak plywood that goes from this piece of wood here on an angle down here and it's finished nicely. It covers up the fuse box and the actuator motor for the windlass on the deck. Now the windlass is right above this plate here and there's two holes, one there, one there for the anchor road to come through. But this is the V-berth. So the wood that goes down here catches the chain and it goes down through these holes into the forward area of the bow and that's okay but the downside is when the chain or rope comes in so does the water and the water comes running down and there's a piece of wood that goes across here that matches this piece of wood here and it catches the water and of course it gets wet and then it dries out and it gets wet and it dries out and then it rots. So that piece there is quite rotten. This plywood bulkhead, this hole here, I cut it out because it was quite rotten. So in order to prevent rot from setting in again, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to hopefully be able to create a downspout for the uh, anchor roads to be put away properly. And I'm going to cover this with penetrating epoxy first, then I'm going to put some glass mat over top of it for two purposes. One, to prevent water getting in it, and two, to strengthen it. The Samson posts are bolted through this particular bulkhead. Now, I know that the most of the uh, stress from the Samson posts is taken by the deck, but in case of an emergency, if you run out the end of the uh, anchor rotor and whatnot, they are attached to the bottom of the Samson post. So we don't want those pulling out either, which means we need to have a little bit of strength in the bulkhead. So I'm going to take my leftover penetrating epoxy right here and get busy. Of course, it doesn't have to look fancy. It just has to work. Now, for any of you do-it-yourselfers out there who are contemplating doing something like this, please understand that this stuff stinks to high heaven. And I should probably be wearing a respirator, but I'm an old fool, and I'm not wearing a respirator. And uh, this is a fairly enclosed space, and so the fumes are quite strong. I've got the uh, forward hatch open, but that really doesn't exhaust the fumes out of here so hopefully I don't get too wrecked on this and I don't fry too many brain cells not that that's going to matter much just a heads up caveat for you don't do as I do I wanted to show you this this is where the cap rail came off these little blobs here are butyl tape, but you can see on those, butyl tape didn't even hit the bulwark, which is how far off the bulwark the cap rail was. So it's quite obvious why I need some dolphinite or some other bedding material, polysulfide type stuff to uh, put the cap rail down on. Doesn't make sense to go to all this effort and work to fix the leaks, only to create more.